What's up you guys, it's Adana, welcome back to my channel. So I wanted to talk to you guys today about a question that I got asked, one of your questions. It was really about kind of like the gap that I had from passing my boards to actually getting a job. So that is what this video is gonna be about. I hope you guys like it. Um, if you do like it, go ahead and hit that like button and subscribe so you can know exactly when I come out with a new video. So this question I got, it was from A-Chan, it says, Hi Adana, thank you for this video. I was looking at your timeline in the description and I noticed between passing your boards in December and starting your new job in April is a few months. What did you do during that time? Did it take that long for the credentialing process? And so um, I was like, yo, I'm gonna do a, question, uh, do a video about this because I think that everybody would like to know what happens from the time that you actually like pass your boards, get that C um, and become certified, become a certified PA to actually getting your first job. Now, if you've seen any of my other videos, um, like way, way back when I talk about, you know, building bridges and things like that during rotations, because it's important if you are going to be a new grad PA to have those connections so that you can reach out to them when you're graduating, when you pass your boards to say, hey, you know, I'm interested in a position at your company. Um, are you guys hiring? Uh, also, there's a lot of times when you get job offers while you're on the rotation, especially if you're close to graduation so what will happen is like you can work something out where they'll pay for your board exam and they'll help with all of like the credentialing and all of that stuff now Achan asked if it took that long for credentialing and so it didn't take that long for credentialing but some of that time was credentialing so I didn't I got offered jobs like while I was in PA school but because I was so far out like I got offered jobs during my first few months of rotations and I still had like another six, seven more months of rotations to go through. So it just wasn't gonna be a good fit. So that didn't quite work out. So once I actually like graduated PA school and then I went and I took my boards in December, for like the second time, you guys, if you haven't seen that video, go check that video out. Um, but I took it again and I passed my boards. I took it in November and I passed them in December. You found out that you pass usually like a week after taking your board exam. So immediately after passing my boards, I started applying to jobs and I immediately started getting offers for interviews. And that process is, it can be daunting, but you kind of just go with the flow, really. You know, you kind of just, or you're like, okay, like, I want to see what it's like. You get your feet wet. You want to see what kind of offers you're getting, um, if it is kind of like the national norm or if it's just like somebody trying to lowball you or not, or if it's really a good offer. So I did quite a few job interviews and... I reached out to one of my friends, I would say, that I made while I was on a rotation. This is why I say, build those bridges, don't burn them um, when you're on your rotations. But she was my kind of preceptor for that rotation. And she was like, hey, yeah, you know, I know that our hospital is hiring. Do you want me to reach out to the hiring manager for you? And I was like, yeah, sure, you know, why not? I don't mind coming back to that hospital. I had a good experience there. And, you know, if I can get into this particular field, I think that would be great. If I could just get into the hospital, I think that would be great as well, because then I can kind of maneuver into the field that I want to be in. So she reached out for me and that was like, maybe I would say in like December, like close to the end of December. And then I went, I like contacted him because he contacted me first and um, I reached back out and was like, yeah, you know, I'm interested. He said what the positions were. Um, there was like an ICU position, this trauma position and a cardiology position. And I knew like I wasn't really trying to do ICU or cardiology. So I was like, okay, I rotated in trauma. So let me say that I'm interested in this trauma, like general surgery position. So my position started off as general surgery and we were going to be cross-trained in trauma because a lot of our general surgeons are our traumatologists as well. So 
it was gonna be kind of like an easy fit. But um, because like COVID hit and all that stuff happened, we really just kind of were thrown into trauma. So it worked out, you know, because I'm getting a lot of experience. But um, back to my timeline, you know, I reached out to him that was closer to the end of um, mid, mid to end of January. I went in, I had my first interview. He was like, yo, you know, the job is yours if you want it. Um, I was like, yeah, you know, I'm interested in it. He, he brought me back for a second interview view towards the end end of January and then um, towards the beginning of February I had a third interview and he's like yeah the job is yours you know this is what we're offering I'll get you the like final like actual real offer in um, a couple days if you want it I was like yeah I do want it so I actually got hired um, really and truly in the beginning of February so if you can imagine I started applications and things like that and I had a lot of interviews from December to January and I got hired at my current position in February but I didn't start working until April and that was because of the credentialing process. So when you are a new grad PA, um, it takes a little bit longer for you to credential, typically like three months. Uh, if you're not a new grad PA, it kind of goes a little bit smoother, but since I was a new grad PA, there was a lot of things that had I had to go through. And the process of credentialing is literally like they're, they're looking at everything, you know, they're trying to make sure that you are actually who you say you are, that you are a licensed professional, that you can work in your capabilities. So they're looking at all of like your graduation, you know, when you graduated, who was your director, like they ask you all of those questions um, through the credentialing paperwork. Um, they need to know your, you know, cert, your cert, like your certification number and your license and all of that stuff. But licensing and licensure is also all part of the credentialing process when you're a new grad. So I had to go through that whole thing where like I paid for my license and then they would reimburse me. So I said, yeah, you know, like my license hasn't come through yet but this is the information for the person who's doing that um and then we go through and we have to like figure out who's my supervising physician going to be get all of that delegation stuff because as a pa you still need to have somebody that is like your supervising physician who's going to be over you and kind of like their license is attached to your license i guess you can say so that whole process takes an extremely long time because they have to go you know verify all of this information go to the board go to your school um you know if they so choose and kind of just knock all of this stuff through and in the same process you're getting all of the information for your licensure as well so that takes a little while um and for me i didn't have to have like my dea license and all of those things to like prescribe drugs and things like that um once i got hired but you know in the time period of getting hired, I needed to apply for that. And with that stuff, you can't apply for like your DEA license until you have like your CDS life license and you can't apply for a CDS license until you have your actual state license. So it was just like a really kind of long convoluted process where you're sitting up here, you're just kind of in this waiting mode. Um, you're signing a lot of documents, you're reading a lot of documents, so make sure you read all all of your documents because you know this is a, a binding contract and you want to make sure that um, what you're signing is something that you want I negotiated like a lot of the various different things in terms of like my the, the times that I would work or that I wanted to work you know various different things like religious accommodation because I am Adventist so I wanted to ensure that you know I had my Sabbaths to where I could you know worship and be with my family on Sabbath and you know honor God and so that was all like in this whole process of credentialing getting hired um, and onboarding I guess you could say and throughout that process as well that what they're doing also is making sure that you're getting like all of like the the stuff for Medicaid and Medicare where you're able to actually like bill for those various different things. So it's not just like you're sitting down twiddling your thumbs. There are things that you're going to have to be doing, but it is a lengthy process and it can take up to three months. So that is why I got hired in February, but I didn't really start working until the beginning of April. Um, it took a little bit like two months. And I think that that was a really short time in comparison to like some of my other 
other classmates and some of the other people that I knew that got um, jobs earlier on, like prior to me, like they, we started kind of at the same time, but they started their process a little bit earlier than mine. And I think that's partially because of COVID, like they were trying to get things pushed through. And I, I got in right before everything kind of stalled and everybody was starting to work from home. So it, it worked out. Um, it wasn't, I didn't think that it was that long, but when you're in the thick of it and then when you kind of look back and you're like, oh, okay, yeah, you know, that was like a eight week period from me getting hired to actually um, starting my job, or I guess how you guys are looking, me passing my boards to starting my job. Um, it's a little bit longer, almost four months, but uh, it is the process. And so trust the process, don't worry. You know, as long, like that, the first thing is getting the job, right? So as long as you get the job, you're good. Start going through the credentialing process. Do the various different things that you need to do. Make sure that you are actually like on top of your stuff because some th sometimes things kind of fall through the wayside and that will stall or make your process of actually starting your job and getting onboarded a lot longer. So um, once, once you've graduated and passed your boards and it's time for you to actually like get your job and go through that whole credentialing process, make sure that you have everything every single thing that you need, all of your numbers, your license and, um, you know, cert certification numbers and all of that stuff, um, and all of your verifications so that you can just give them everything, uh, any immunizations and things like that, that you may need, um, have all of that ready to just give them so that your process can be smooth. But that was it. That's really what I did. Um, and I also did a lot of studying because I was really nervous. I'm like, oh man, like, I don't know, like, I don't want to forget anything. And, um, I didn't know exactly what various different things I would be seeing per se, um, that I really needed to be like honed in on, on the general surgery side of things. So I was doing a lot of studying during that time as well. But that is what I did during that four month slash three month time period from actually passing my boards, getting hired and actually starting my now job that I'm on currently. All right, so I hope that answered your question. I hope that gave you guys a little bit more insight. You can also, you know, just Google like what is the credentialing process like um, and what happens in that process just so you, you're a little bit more familiar with that um, and kind of the length of time that it may take. If you guys are serious about getting that C, don't forget that we have started a platform called Get That C University. So head on over to getthatcuniversity.com um, and sign up to be a part of the platform. We have a lot of great things to offer uh, medical Spanish, virtual shadowing, and so much more. So check it out. Thank you guys so much for watching. Please, please, please leave your comments in the comment section below. You guys know I read them. I try to answer them um, either on in the comment section or in the form of a video. So if you want your question answered in the form of a video, the only way to do that is by leaving a comment. So go ahead and do that right now. Follow me on Instagram at Adana the PA or follow Get That C on Instagram at Get That C University and um, like this video and subscribe. Thank you guys so much for watching. I will talk to you guys next time. 